So uh, this is another chunk of a talk I ripped out of something else. So you're missing all the context. But um, it's somewhat related, and it's also very high level and fluffy because we don't have anything that actually uses this. But you know, these are just my idea 1001 on my to-do list 10 years from now. Um, but when you talk about dynamic languages, I'm talking about things like you know, <coughs> Python, Ruby, JavaScript, uh, whatever else, all these different you know, languages. Objective C, right? Well, so the, the problems with all these languages is that, or with a lot of the stricken languages, is that you have completely untyped variables. So if you have something like a simple for loop and you have a sub i, what does that mean? Well, i is actually going to be an integer object <laughs> or something in Ruby, for example. And you know, having all this information, or you know, the, the naive interpretation of this is that you know when you say i equals zero. You do a switch on the assignment operation at runtime, and now you need to check that the destination is an integer, or this forces the destination to become an integer. You know, you have to runtime type type check whether or not this is a string to do a comparison, because a string comparison is an integer comparison, and all all this crazy stuff, right? Well, and this comes in as this integrates with the HLVM idea, where you know suddenly if you have an AST for this, and you have the language independent AST, and with some language to some flavor, um, you know, you can do some simple static analysis to prove a lot of information about these things. And this is well-known data flow analysis for type inference, right? You can see easily that i starts out as an integer, right? And you can do data flow propagation to say, well, when you increment i, this produces a new i, that i is also an integer. This is craziness. And so <laughs> you can see that inside the loop, i is not modified. Well, what does that mean? If i starts out as an integer, and it's always an integer later, it's got to be an integer, right? And so this is just a simple way of saying, well, we can do run, you know, static analysis to, sh to unbox objects in simple cases, and suddenly you can you know, prove these things away. Um, this is the kind of approach that would be implemented in something like HLVM, where you have a high-level AST, you're going to do a data flow analysis on top of it, and you know, once you prove away the, the types and you decide you have some concrete type, you can generate better result game. Once you get to, if you convert the initial code to LVM, then you probably aren't going to be able to reconstruct enough information. You don't want to do this. But if you treat LVM as just a code generator and an optimizer for low scalar code, when you convert this to an LVM integer type, LVM can now unroll the loop or do whatever. Right. And so there's separation of you know, responsibilities between what the front end can do and what the LVM can do. And I think that's the reason for that. So this basically talks about, you know, you have. Stack analysis for type inference has lots of limitations, um, but it also has some benefits. The primary benefit is you don't have to modify your source. The, the uh, other benefit is that there's a huge range of different ways of doing this, different trade-offs, um, and you can make work, work with lots of languages, which means you can prioritize it based on the type system you use and different things like that. Of course, in general, you can't prove every type, but if you prove some types, you're going to enough. So anyways, um, you know, I, I think the scripting languages are interesting, and in the future I'd like to get involved with them, but you know, so little, so much time. <laughs> um, but you know, with LVM, you know, suddenly you're talking about having ahead of time computation, you know, compilation, you have J compilation, you can do all this, all this stuff. That's basically the end of my half big talk. <laughs> anyways, so that's it.
uh, some one of the summer cousins is actually doing QMU. Q yeah. QMU through LVM. That's so cool. QMU is this uh, this simulator for you know, uh, whatever on a non native machine. So he's actually runtime reading on instructions or whatever, and then turning it to LVM and then checking out and that back out to the native instructions. So you don't have the Python LVM project with them? Uh, they high five. Yeah. So um, my understanding is they just lost or their EU funding just ended. <laughs> so um, they are LVM as far as I know provides the best performance of all their backends, including C and other other stuff. Um, and they were intent on building a JIT themselves themselves because the EU funding required it. <laughs> um, but I, I don't really know where that project's going because they lost the funding, and it really depends on you know where the, the individuals are. I think it'll be interesting to watch, but um, they've proven that you can obviously build the Python for